when we let off last time, we had finished up the main code here in the inventory component that would uh, handle non-stackable items. So one thing I want to mention real quick that I did um, when I wasn't recording is that if you remember, I had put placeholder code here for the stackable, uh, handle stackable, the returns. Um, but I went ahead and filled out those item add results um, because, you know, you, basically there was a compiler error saying like, hey, you have multiple if statements, but um, some of the paths in this function don't return. So I figured I'd go ahead and fill it out. Um, it won't take you long to do it. You know, just go ahead and, and um, copy paste another one and then change the format slightly. So for, you know, if the amount added matches what you initially requested, you added all. If it's less, you added partial. And obviously, anything else less than or equal to zero, you added none. And, you know, just put in your um, messages here. And I put in the amounts and the names and stuff like I did on the uh, handle non-stackable. So, you know, just um, go ahead and build those up on your own or just pause it and take a look and mimic what I have here. So basically the situation right now is we have a functioning, we actually have a fully functioning inventory. So check this out. Um, if I come over here, uh, let me open the output log. All right, so if I come over here to this bucket, well, here, check, check this out first. So here's a regeneration potion. If I try to pick it up, it says, can add no remaining inventory slots or invalid item. And if you look back in our code, that is the added none, right? So stackable amount added. Remember, we aren't doing anything in this function yet. I just have it returning a zero. So it's actually working exactly as intended. Handle, handle stackable is being called. Stackable amount added is zero because it returns a zero. And that prints out our you know, our last case here, we added none, um, no, you know, no slots or invalid item. In this case, I would call it invalid item because nothing is being done in the background and it's, you know, getting the incorrect result. But that's what we want to see right now. So then check this out. If we go to the bucket and hit E, successfully added a single bucket to the inventory. And if you come down and look at your actual character here in the details panel and we go to the inventory, look at it. We have an inventory weight value of four. There's our slots and our weight capacity. But in our inventory contents array, we have an element. It's an item base. Now, you won't be able to see any of the other internal data on it, like expand it and stuff. But it matches what's in the you know settings. Uh, for the bucket. So if we go to, um, let's see, if we go to the item data, test items data sheet that we created and we look at the bucket. So there's the bucket and it weighs 4.0 and that's exactly what is, uh, that's exactly what's being reflected here in the inventory. So the inventory is working uh, which is really awesome, but it just doesn't have any visual component. You know, we don't have anything we can see, no menu to pull up, no graphical representation. And so that's going to be the main focus of this section. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Um, one other thing I will mention in the last video, I did talk about in handle stackable, how it was goofy that it was taking in an actual amount or sorry, handle non stackable because you should only ever be doing one, right? It's not stackable. So I did make that change. I went ahead and took off the amount input here. So it just takes in a single item. Um, and then down here at the bottom, this used to be add new item input, you know, requested amount. I just replaced this with a one. Same here with the added all in the printout, successfully added a single uh, because this one, it, it needs an amount added you know, that's, that should stay. But then in the message here, I just said, added a single. So, and then have the name. So pretty easy change, just cleans things up a little bit. You know, if you don't, if there's ever a case where you can remove some extraneous code, in my opinion, you should, and that wasn't really doing much. So <clears throat> that's the only other thing I did when I wasn't recording. 
All right, so to get started, what we want is we're gonna need a couple of new classes. Um, so I'm gonna go in my user interface inventory, I'm gonna add a new C++ class, and this is going to be a widget, uh, a user widget specifically. And what we're going to create is called an inventory item slot. This is the thing, this is gonna be the visual representation of each item in the inventory, and this will also govern all the logic for clicking on inventory items. So uh, if you wanna click and drag to drag it to another container or drop it, if you mouse over it and there's a tool tip and anything else, in, in my case, um, I developed a little sub menu. When you right click it, it gives you some options. So we're gonna do all of that, and that logic is all handled here in the inventory item slot class, as well as setting the visuals for it. Uh, make sure your paths look good, inventory item slot dot CC. Everything looks good, and it is a user widget. All right, so it finished adding. Um, so here's our item slot, it created it, everything looks good. We're done with live coding. Okay, and so the next one we're gonna need is we want a tooltip because we wanna be able to customize it and you know when you mouse over an item, something will pop up showing you some info. So this one is also a user widget. Um, and this one I'm just calling inventory tooltip. Everything looks good with the paths. All right, so that one was added. And then the next one is a, <clears throat> uh, this one is also going to be a user widget. There's two more user widgets, uh, sorry, one more. This one is a, um, I'm calling this drag item visual. And so what this will do is when you go to actually drag uh, the dra the internal, the engine, handling of a drag operation can have a widget attached to it for a visual and so like that way it kind of makes it you know it simulates you're picking it up on your mouse pointer so this is the widget that's going to be used for that um, and so we can customize it and put whatever we want on it uh, but we do have to have a class for that to be able to set that up so drag on visual all right so it looks like it actually did fail somehow creating my uh, drag item visual, which makes no sense at all. Um, it was added to the project here on the C++ side, but it's not showing up here. So I'm gonna have to troubleshoot that, but I will uh, do that off recording because it might take a minute and then talk about what the issue was. I'm gonna go ahead and try to add the last one and hopefully it works. So uh, the last thing we need to add is called a drag drop operation. So the reason why we need this is because, um, what did I call it? I called it item drag drop operation. So what this class is gonna do is it's going to make it to where we can customize what data is carried along with the drag and drop. So the drag item visual does just the visual part of it. This part you can think of as doing the data part of it. And the reason why we need a custom one of this is to add some special fields to it. Um, Normally, you could get, get, get away with only using the base class of drag drop operation. But what we wanna do is, we wanna carry a reference to the item with it, and we want to carry a reference to the inventory that it came from. And that comes into play later with the uh, containers and such. Um, did it add, okay, so yeah, it just had a hiccup and uh, I kept going and, and now drag on visual showing up properly and everything uh, compiled this time. So I don't know what happened earlier. Okay, so those are, the those are the main inventory specific classes we need and now we have everything in place to start filling out the C++ side of things. Um, there's one more class that I wanna add and I'm gonna add it here under the player and that is just a custom player controller. Um, let's see, player controller, and I called the, I'm going to call this, since we're the tutorial, I'm calling the core systems tutorial, I'm going to call this, and I've got it 
uh, CS tutorial character. I'm going to call this CS tutorial player controller. <clears throat> so the reason why I want a custom player controller, I'm sure you've noticed if you've been messing around and following along when you go to try to aim at items, it's really annoying that the, um, the line trace comes out of the characters like neck and then it's really hard to, you know, you can't really control like what you're looking at for a small thing. See, it's like you got to kind of mess with it and you can't see it and stuff. So part of why I want a custom player controller is that um, I'm going to implement a little aim function where like if you right click, the camera zooms in almost like over the shoulder and it allows for precise manipulation. Like this would now become extremely easy because it's going to make it to where you, you know, it's closer and you can, uh, you don't have the character obstructing the view. But in order to do that, I needed to put some controls into the player controller. So for example, if you look at our character right now, all of our turning and moving is here. Uh, I move this to the player controller and then, you know, have it do a couple other things. So we'll implement, implement that much later on. Uh, but I am going to go ahead or I just did and went ahead and made that class. So now we have our custom player controller class that we can move functionality into later on. Okay. So now we have <clears throat> the core classes of the inventory ready to go. Panel was already made. Slot is going to show each individual item. And then you have the, you know, supporting classes, the tooltip and the drag and drop stuff. But right now we can't even bring up our inventory. We can't even see it, even if it has no functionality. We know it's working in the background. You saw it as the check I did earlier. So that's good, but we need visuals now. <clears throat> so the first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna close the, close the editor because I need to go in here to the HUD and uh, start making some changes. So I have my HUD class open and ready. Now notice I have a display menu and a hide menu, but nothing is actually calling those. So like if I go to find usages, you know, usages were not found. So what we're going to do, we're going to add a function that hides and shows the, the main menu widget, because that's the one that has the inventory panel on it. And we're going to then call that from the player. And so that function is just going to be called toggle menu. We'll create a definition for it. <clears throat> and now a toggle menu is going to be pretty simple. Uh, basically what it does is if menu is visible, right? Which we're controlling here when we actually call the hide and display. If menu is visible already, we want to hide it. And then we want to set some of the input modes. And so this is where, you know, part of the player controller stuff comes into play. So you can control, um, basically you can make it to where this input mode. So it's called F input mode. Here you go. You can see them now. So game and UI will make it to where mouse clicks interact with both the game itself and UI elements, or you can choose one or the other. Okay. So in this case, when the menu is hidden, we want game only. And so I'll just call it input mode. Get owning player controller, <clears throat> set input mode, and then just put in our input mode that we just made. And then we also want to come down, get this again, and it's called show mouse cursor, set show mouse cursor. We want this to now be a false, right? Because when you're just roaming around, <clears throat> you the mouse is linked directly to the camera. And so that will set up everything for that. Now, if the menu is not visible, we're going to display it. And we're going to do the same exact stuff here, except this time we're setting the input mode to F input mode, game and UI. <clears throat> and we're going to hide, we're going to show the mouse cursor. So my reasoning on this was, uh, when the menu's open, you can still click in the 
off of the UI elements and, and control your character. You can move the camera around and so on and so forth. Uh, but you can also go over the inventory panel and, and interact with it. Um, I guess, you know, I've played games like Dark Souls and stuff where when the menu is open, the game is still running and I'm sure anyone else who's played it knows you'll get attacked in the menu. I kind of like that, like a real time rather than like a full pause. So I was going for something like that. But at the same time, my UI doesn't cover the whole screen right now. So it's very easy to still roam around and, and do stuff. Um, it also may, I also was thinking, you know, if you have a bunch of items in an area, it's nice to have the menu open, be able to click and drag, pick up items and do stuff and organize your inventory while still walking around, looking at the other items in the room. So that was just some of the logic behind, uh, the way it is here. You could easily implement some pause functionality and set this to UI only and make it to where the game pauses and, you know, you can do stuff with your inventory, uh, safely, but. That's just how I have it going for now. Uh, feel free to experiment. So we've got toggle menu. Uh, so we need to actually make it to where toggle menu is called. So we're going to go over here to the character class in the, uh, in the CPP. We don't, since that is a function in the HUD, we don't need to do anything for the, um, actually, no, I was wrong. So it is in the HUD. We are going to call it, but we still will need to make a toggle menu in the character. Um, because that way, you know, you have to call a function here with a, a key input has to call a function here. It can't call a function in the HUD directly. So create a toggle menu, give it an implementation or definition. And this one, I'm going to put down towards the bottom, right above the movement stuff. And now we need to go to the character input bindings. <clears throat> and we're binding an action. And the action we want is toggle menu ie pressed we don't really care about it happening when it releases we're binding it to this class and we're going to bind toggle menu so there you go right okay and so writer is being helpful again and telling me hey this isn't a name of any input action it's referring to the actual settings in the um, in the editor. So when we go back into the editor, we'll set that, and then we will be able to hit that, and hopefully it should um, we should see the menu turning on and off. Uh, but first, let's make sure that we fill the actual function out in order for that to happen. So it's very simple um, since we already have a reference to the HUD and we've already filled it out. Uh, up in begin play, if you remember, uh, right here, we get this. So we have our reference to the HUD. So now we just need to call HUD toggle menu. And that should be it for now. <clears throat> the aim stuff I talked about later will come into play with some of this, but, um, but yeah. Member function can be const. Sure, we'll do that. Okay, it doesn't change anything. Now let's launch and see if it worked. Interestingly enough, I had a compiler error and it looks like it was because I tried to make this function const. So I think Ryder, Ryder did me dirty a little bit there. I don't know why it's something to do with, it must be something in the background, you know, this is a function pointer and something to do with it being const causes an issue. So if you were following, if you were mimicking what I did, go back and take that off and uh, make it to where this function is not const. Okay, so now we need to go to uh, project settings, input. So on the left here in engine, you scroll down, input. We are looking for our action mappings. So all we have right now is a jump and an interact. So let's add a new one and we're calling this one toggle menu. And for the key, I'm just going to use tab. All right, easy. 
And now I wonder, is it smart enough? Yeah, look at that. So it must be scanning. Th so this just edits like a uh, like an uh, like a JSON or XML or something on the fly. So right when you make a change, it's saved, and so I guess it scans that. So pretty cool. All right, so let's test it out. So I'm gonna hit tab, and what I expect is the inventory is gonna pop up. Awesome. Look, the mouse showed. If we click and drag, we can still change anything. We can still roam around. Um, and we have the mouse. So it's working how we want. Input mode is changing. As you can see, the mouse is getting hidden when the menu is not displayed. And the other test, you know, is everything is still okay. So yeah, when we set it up to show our interaction widget, it still shows. It's on the lower Z level, but that's something that we'll test um, when we actually have items here, right? Because again, we made it to where this guy is underneath, so that way it doesn't block your mouse clicks when you go to do stuff. Okay, so that's looking good. Uh, now it's time to start filling out the C++ code for this guy so that when we pick something up, it immediately updates and you see it show up right here. So I'm gonna close the editor and now I'm going to go over to inventory panel. So with inventory panel, it's not even linked up at all. Uh, you know, it's completely independent other than the, the widget is a base class of this, but it doesn't have any of the bindings that we, that we need. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by adding in, uh, let's see. I'm going to add a public and a protected section. So for public things, what we can do, we can just basically everything um, that it needs, its elements. First, we're going to have a function that's refresh inventory. And this will just be used to force a refresh if we need to. Uh, I think actually we're binding this. We're probably binding this to the broadcast of the inventory updated delegate. That way it gets called every time the inventory is updated, but you can also call it manually if need be. We need a wrap box because that's what's actually storing the inventory items. We need a couple of text blocks. We need one for weight. We need one for capacity. And let's see what else. We need a reference to the character. I'm going to add a for declaration because this is the header. I don't need to include the other header. The reason we need this is because we're getting the inventory reference from the player character who's interacting with something. Um, so we'll be able to use this to say get inventory contents and show the array. We need the inventory component reference. And then we will need a T subclass of that is the inventory item slot. Because we're setting this, this widget's gonna be responsible for creating all the new item slot classes when things are added. So we're gonna set this in the actual inventory panel uh, class so that it knows like which widget to use when it builds those, okay? So now let's go ahead um, and set some of the U properties and such. So since this is going to be bound to a delegate, it has to be a U function. You'll run into weird errors uh, that are not always super intuitive if it's not a U function. So if you forget and get some errors, you know, that's something to check. Uh, we need U property meta bind widget for these three because these are actually gonna be linked here in the C++ code up to the widget object, the graphical part. 
And then these can just be U properties. Um, they don't need any specifiers. Uh, we do want this one though, the, the inventory slot class to be edit anywhere, uh, just because that way it's gonna be, uh, let's see. This should never, this will never change for the inventory panel. It's always going to use the same base class for the inventory slot, so actually, this can be edit defaults only. That way, you know, any amount of inventories know a, they just have a single reference to this class, and that, that's good. In the protect, protected section, we're going to have a couple of different uh, functions here. So one of them is set info text. That's a const. It's not modifying anything. Um, what that one's going to do is essentially. Um, set the weight and capacity info. It's just a, I split it out to its own little function. And then we need to do a couple of overrides. And so I'm gonna use writer for that. Uh, generate overriding members here. And what I'm after is those native that on initialize, native, native on initialized, and then um, I want on drop native on drop right here and so the reason i want those is because um, you can drop things into the inventory panel so we need to handle that and then native on initialize will just let us set some stuff when it's created this is almost like the constructor uh, <clears throat> and then the drag the drag itself though is handled from the inventory slot class itself uh, that right so because you're going to click on an inventory item not the panel itself. So that's why there's no, you know, no drag stuff. All right, so that's looking good. Um, let's go and generate definitions. We want one for everything. So it looks good. Minimize this. All right, I want native on initialize to be first. I want refresh inventory to be a little bit lower. It's fine. Okay, so let's start filling this out. Um, for our on initialized, what we're gonna do is we're first going to get, we're gonna set this reference to the player character. So it's gonna be set to CS Tutorials character. It added a include for me already, which is fine, but don't forget to do that because you may not be using writer with all the automatic stuff. And we're going to just call get owning player pawn. Now, something I talked about in the past videos with the UI stuff is there's a chain uh, because you set in the player controller, uh, or sorry, you set in the game mode what classes are used. So we're gonna set the custom player controller that's then linked to the tutorial character. And so basically anytime you have that chain in place, it allows stuff like this to work. And um, we, there's another, I think it was here in the character. Yeah, see the Git HUD, because we link it all up. So now this player controller knows it's using this HUD and so on and so forth. So we're gonna get our player character if player character is not null, we then are going to set our reference, our inventory reference by getting player character get inventory. And remember, get inventory returns a direct reference to the component uh, on the player, to the inventory component. And then again, if inventory reference succeeds and it is not null, we're going to bind, now this is where we're binding the delegate. On inventory updated, remember we made that a public delegate here in inventory component. We're calling add u object because it is a, um, the reason for that is because it is not a dynamic delegate. It's just a normal one, which is C++ only. Dynamic can be used from blueprint, 
but when you use those, you bind it a slightly different way, uh, which you may have seen, but for the non blueprint ones, it's add you object. And we're passing in this inventory panel, and we're gonna bind it up right there with refresh inventory. And then we're calling set info text because right when everything is initialized, if the inventory has something in it already, you want to be able to see that reflected. Otherwise, you know, it's only going to get reflected uh, later when the, the first time refresh inventory is called. So that's what that's about. Um, then let's actually fill out set info text. So in this case, we're, this is for setting the weight info and the capacity. So we're going to call set text F text format, and we're going to be using F text from string. And we're going to be passing in, uh, let's see. So I want it to just show basically, um, like the two numbers, right? Like uh, if it's 50 weight is the default, I want it to show number slash maximum. So all we're gonna do is use this syntax that we talked about in the past and pass in two arguments here. And so the two arguments are going to be our inventory reference, get inventory total weight. I'm gonna indent and inventory reference get weight capacity so i had a little i had an error here that i stopped for a second to look at uh, but it was it's very simple essentially we don't have the header included for text block and so uh include so writer's going to help me out so i can include that and then this is not read anymore and we're good to go so I'm copy pasting this and I'm going to change this one to capacity info. For my text, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Uh, but in this case, we're getting get inventory contents dot num, right? Because there's the number of items in the array and then we're getting slots capacity. So it's pretty simple. Now for refresh inventory, this is the this is the key here. This is the function that's gonna make everything show up in the inventory. So first we wanna make sure that we have a valid inventory reference and our inventory slot class has been set. Because if it hasn't, if you forget to set this, it's gonna come in as null and you, know, you don't wanna try to actually create and use those if you don't have an actual, the proper reference set to it here. Uh, it looks like I just need to add my include for inventory item slot. So that makes sense. Here's my game includes and here's engine includes. So let's go ahead actually and add, we know we're going to need wrap box because that's what the inventory is. And I think think that was it. it's just wrap box and text block all right so the first thing we want to do <clears throat> when we go to update the inventory is we actually want to clear the inventory the reason for that obviously being if you don't it's it's going to keep what was there before and just add stuff when it iterates you know it'll just add it on top and so we want it to give the appearance of only showing the most up-to-date picture of the inventory, obviously, right? So you got to clear everything out first before you re-add everything. And so to, to add everything, what we're going to do is we're going to iterate the inventory. Inventory reference, get inventory contents, okay? Now this, this syntax might seem weird to you. What's going on here? Uh, it's kind of partially my philosophy. I don't like to use auto. If you put auto here, then you're good to go. It knows it will find that. 
I just don't always like it because it hides things in the background, you know? See, even though it's telling us here, hey, this is the deduce type, it's still not giving me as much information as this. Now I know it's a const pointer uh, and a reference, you know, to that item. So it's up to you. You really won't, you, it's not going to affect anything performance wise. This is really just me. I like to see all the, you know, as much info as I can rather than using auto. All right, so this is basically going to get the inventory array and we're going to iterate through it. And every time we go to a new item, it's going to be called inventory item. So we're going to create an inventory item slot, call it item slot, call in create widget. This takes in a template, which is obviously going to be an inventory item slot. The owner is this, the inventory panel, and the class we're using is inventory slot class. Now for widgets, if you, I think, I don't think we've done it yet, but there's a, there's a thing you can do that's essentially static class. So if you like, for example, if I get a, use the scope operator here, see, you can call this, this is going to return only the C++ version. So we don't want that because we need the graphical side of things as well. And so when we set this on the inventory panel, it's actually setting it to where it knows not only the C++ class, but the widget class. That's what's actually needed to create, to create a widget, obviously. So you can't use just the static class there. Nothing will, nothing will work. Once we've created the item slot, we want to then set our item reference. Now, I haven't filled out the item slot code yet, so that's why this doesn't exist, but it's going to set it to the inventory item. And then we're just going to call inventory panel, add child to wrap box, and give it item slot. So it's pretty basic. Now I'm going to comment this out for now because otherwise it's going to cause compiler errors. But that's the core of it uh, for the inventory panel. We set up all the references here when it's initialized so that way it knows where it's pulling items from. We bind our updated delegate so that way anytime the inventory changes we call refresh. And then refresh itself is pretty basic. Um, it just goes and it uh, adds the item slots, right? We'll worry about the drop later on. Uh, I want to get the actual stuff appearing first. And so, yeah, let's go ahead on over to the item slot. So for item slot, the first thing we need to start with is obviously filling out all the necessary fields. Um, so again, I'm going to have a public and a protected section. In the public section, I'm going to have a couple of basic uh, basic functions here. So one of them is what I just talked about, set item reference. It's going to take in a U item base and it's going to set item reference is equal to item in. So we don't even have item reference yet. So let's create that. And that one can be in protected since nothing really needs to directly access that. And I'll just go ahead and add a for declaration. This is a U property and it doesn't need anything really other than a category. All right, and now we can actually come back over, go back over to inventory panel now and you can uncomment that. Now everything looks good. <clears throat> um, let's see. We'll call this visible anywhere just because, you know, you don't need to edit this from the editor, but it's nice to be able to just see it. So 
it was mad. It was saying, hey, you've given a category, but it's not visible to anything. So that's what that was. Uh, back up here for the public functions, force inline, get item reference. And all it does is return item reference. So pretty basic. And then uh, this one will come later. This is where uh, I started typing without really looking ahead. But basically, the sub menu when you right click stuff, um, I have a thing that sets that. But we don't need to put that for now. We will revisit that later on when we actually get the inventory up and running and it's time to start adding extra stuff. All right, so what else do we need here? So we need to set a T subclass of the drag item visual. If you remember, that one is spawned off of the item slot when you drag and drop it. And this just holds the visual component of the drag operation. So that one is just called drag item visual class. It is a U property that will be edit defaults only and its category is inventory slot. We need uh, one more of these. But this time it is a inventory tooltip and I'm calling it tooltip class. Again, just copy this because it's something that, you know, throughout all inventory uh, inventory item slots and panels, these will never change. They will use the same class. So edit defaults only makes the most sense. Um, then the item slot itself is just a little square, right? I'm just going with something basic. It's a little square. It shows a picture of the item, the icon. It shows a little number for, for the quantity. And then I, I added a border. So the border can be set to represent like rarity or, you know, whatever you want. If you have like a special item uh, type that you want to highlight differently, it's just nice to have that. And you can change the color of the border. So what I did was I added U border and called it item border, a U image. This is the item icon. And then U text block. This one is the um, the quantity that will show up on the on the uh, on the little the little square, like in the top right. For the properties for these, it's basically everything is going to be category item slot. Um, but in this case, you can make these visible anywhere. We don't really need to edit these through the editor. You just want to see them. And that's the core of what we need for right now, but now we need to do a couple of different, um, several different overrides, actually. Uh, so I'm gonna go to generate overrides. I need native on initialized. I also want native construct. Those happen in slightly different order. Um, and so I just used it to, you could probably put everything into one or the other, but I used it to just kind of separate some functionality. Um, it's probably not necessary to have both. That's just how I decided to do it. We want native on mouse button down. We want native on drag detected, which is here. We also want native on mouse leave. What this one's for, it can actually detect when it leaves the border of the boundary. I use this to say, okay, if I have my little sub menu open, close it. So that way, you know, <clears throat> you right click, you can go to the menu, but then as soon as you mouse off, it closes that menu and it just keeps things kind of clean. The very last thing we want is native on drop which is somewhere in here on drop. Yeah. And what this one did was it 
Um, oh my gosh, it just puts it wherever it wants. Uh, native on drop will actually make it to where when we have stackable stuff, you can drop one inventory item on another and it will look and see if it is the same type, it'll adjust the stack. You know, it'll call handle stackable. So that's what that was for. Let me go ahead and generate uh, definitions for everything. All right, so I'm gonna reorganize. Construct, and then the rest of these can just kind of stay. We're not gonna use most of this for right or the time being right now. We're just, like I said, we're just getting the basics working. So for, uh, move this one up, I think initialize comes first. So if we have a uh, get tooltip, if tooltip is valid, uh, oh wait, sorry, not this. We want to make sure the tooltip class is valid. So if we have a tooltip class set, ah, yeah, let's add the include. So now we we assume we've set the tooltip that the inventory item slot is going to use. We're going to create one. Oops. Again, we're creating inventory tooltip. The owner is this item slot and we're using tooltip class. Then what we do is say, okay, tooltip. Now this isn't, this is not filled out yet, but it's going to have a field, a field that is inventory slot being hovered. So comment that one out until we fill out the tooltip stuff. Uh, and then we will call set tooltip and set that to tooltip. Pretty easy. That's some engine stuff that it handles on the back end to where it says like, okay, when the mouse is hovering, um, show this. This is a custom, you know, the inventory slot is a custom field that I put onto the tooltip. Now for the native construct, this is where we're actually filling out all the different stuff. Um, so first we wanna make sure that the item reference is valid. And if it is, now we're going to switch on item reference quality, item quality. Because this will make it to where, you know, it looks at the quality field and then it um, sets the border color. Right, because that's what I said. The border color. I would, this is what I'm using it for. You don't have to do this. I'm gonna use my uh, shortcut here to generate my missing case statements. And so, way back when I made the item data, you know, these are the things I decided to go with. <clears throat> but again, do whatever you you like. Let me go and format this. And so I'm gonna fast forward here a little bit just because this is more just, you know, copy pasting and tweaking a few things. But to show the first one, what we're doing is we're going to call set brush color and set it to whatever color you think matches that type. So for something shoddy, like low quality, uh, I'm going to, I'm looking for F linear color and it has some defaults built in here, right? So you can see it's got gray, green, et cetera, et cetera. It's got several colors. Um, you can actually go to this class, I think, and look at the, the defaults are in here somewhere. But notice you can also set custom values. And so I leverage that as well because some of the defaults, you know, you want some to have a little bit more than that so basically I'm going to use gray for this one. And now I'll go ahead and show what I mean by creating a custom one. So for the grandmaster here, I went and did something like this F linear color, call its constructor directly and then give it an RGB, an amount for each RGB. 
So I did 165, zero, and then alpha, I think, is that what that is? Yeah, alpha is 1.0. We don't need any alpha on this. So that's an orange color. Okay, so got the brush stuff, uh, the brush color for the border sorted out. And what's next? So now we need to set the item icon. So the item icon is going to use a function called set brush from texture. And the texture we're passing in is the uh, item reference asset data dot icon, right? We have a place to store that. And now we say if item reference numeric data is stackable, then we're going to set the item quantity. The function to use here is F text as number. And then you just pass in item reference quantity. If it is not stackable, then we will set the visibility of the item quantity to be E slate visibility collapsed because we don't need it, right? Just hide it. No need to show a one everywhere for something that's not stackable. Uh, that is pretty much it. Um, like I said, we'll worry about drag and drop here in a little while and the other stuff all these other functions are related to the menus and so on and so forth. So that's it for our item slot. All right, next let's fill out the tool tip. And then the last thing we need to do before we see this all in action is actually build those widgets in the editor because we actually, we don't have an item slot and we don't have a tool tip yet. So for tool tip, um, it's also pretty basic and it's just a, a good bit of um, uh, copying and pasting. The first thing we need, we need, we need several fields here. You, well, you can really put however many you want, but what I mean is first we need our U inventory item slot. Adding a Ford declaration. And this is where that inventory slot being hovered comes in. That way, anytime you hover, the, the tooltip knows what item it needs to get data from. Um, so let's see, where was that? Yeah, comment this, get that now. <clears throat> I'll fill out all the U properties here in a bit. We need a text block. We just need several of these. So. I will go ahead and fill all this out and then uh, um, go back to normal speed and talk about why I did each thing. Okay, so I got it all filled out. Um, it's like I said, just a lot of copy paste of the similar stuff. <clears throat> so what I did was um, I didn't add everything. So our item data has a lot of stuff. I just kind of went with a, a selection of things for now, like the important things, but then like damage value, armor rating. If we go back and look at item data, um, oh yeah, that's right, it's only a, it's only a header. So if we go back and look at item data, uh, you can literally put all of this stuff in there. Uh, but you know, I didn't put this, I didn't put the, I think cell value is going to be, uh, no. So yeah, this is the size of the stack. This might be what I was intending to be the cell value. <clears throat> then I can show the weight and so on and so forth. Um, doesn't, it's a little weird saying stack size. 
cell value. Sure, we can put all that. But anyway, as you can see, you put what you want because this is everything that's gonna show when you hover over it. Um, and we're gonna fill all this out just from the item reference, right? So let me go ahead. The only one you need, the only function you need here is your native construct. So now let's look at the code. Um, and this is really like a ton of, uh, of copy pasting because it's very simple. It's just, there's a lot of fields. So we need to be able to handle all those fields. So first thing we want to do is we want to get the actual item reference so that we can get all of this. So I called this in, uh, item being hovered. And this is going to get inventory slot being hovered, get item reference. So pretty basic there. Uh, let's see. Why is it not mad about that? I think I'm, I'm going to need the header. I'll just go ahead and include it. Um, items. Oops. Item base. Okay. Now I'm going to switch on item being hovered. item type and now this is where we can actually decide what we want to do with all of those right because based on what you're looking at you may not need to show all of these fields so obviously if I'm looking at a uh, mundane item which is like the bucket or something that we have right now why do I need to show damage value I mean I guess if you built your game to where you can use like normal objects as weapons and like beat people with the bucket you can have that, but basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hide or show these different fields based on the item type that we're looking at. So I'm not going to fill out every single one because we have no weapons, we have no quest items, we don't have armor shield, etc. I'll fill out um, just a couple um, and then that way you get a feel for what, you know, what this is about. And you can obviously go back and fill it out, uh, um, fill out the rest on your own. And yeah, you can make this item a const since it's not being changed. We're just reading data from it. Paused for a quick second there, um, but it really wasn't that much stuff that I added since, you know, I'm not filling out every single thing because we're not handling every single item type right now. Um, so I just did consumable and mundane since those are the two that we've created. You know, we made the little test potion and then for the mundane item, the bucket. So the switch statement is just going to handle making the different fields visible based on the item for, you know, for what makes sense. Um, so, you know, obviously, for mundane, you don't use them. They're just like, th you know, things in the world. You can pick it up, um, but there's no need to use it. So usage text will be collapsed. Damage and armor for a consumable obviously don't make sense. Same for both. Um, so, you know, collapse or, or show the things uh, based on the item type. That's all the switch statement does. Now down here, is where we're actually, so we're, we are setting the item type field per, for the switch statement too. But then the rest of it, we wanna set every time, we wanna set everything every time anyway. Even if, you know, damage value and armor rating don't make sense for that item, they will still have like a zero. And so we still set it. That way everything is caught, even items that do have this, but then we don't show it based on the item type. So that's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, like I said, it's just a lot of copy pasting if you wanna fill out everything. Now the only last thing we need to do is, we need to, again, is the item being hovered stackable? So go to my numeric data, get my stackable Boolean. If it is, uh, what did I call it? Stack size. So in this case, I'm gonna, I wanna show, basically I want to show 
on a stackable item how many you can hold in a stack. So I'm gonna say set text on max max stack size. We're going we're getting a number, and the number we're getting is item being hovered, numeric data, max stack size. If it is not stackable, then we would just take our stack size. Uh, so max stack size, set visibility, and set this to collapsed because there's no need to show for non-stackables. Um, let's see. Stack weight, that's still valid because that'll handle both non and stackable. And then cell value, I'm not going to use that right now. It's, you know, we could, but it's just literally a number sitting there. So I'm going to go ahead and set that visibility to collapsed for both of these cases right now. <clears throat> okay. If it does need to, just for completion's sake, though, we will go ahead and set it since everything else is being set numeric data dot oh man what did i call it i'm pretty sure i put it in there <clears throat> so it's under item statistics rather than numeric data which might be something that i want to i want to move just because, you know, it makes more sense to me to go into the numeric data to get stuff like the, the cell value. Um, let's see, it's mad. We need F text as number. Is there like a float? No, as number. And we set it using that. Okay. So that's it for what the tooltip does when you hover over stuff. Um, pretty straightforward. Everything here looks good. So that way when we go to build it, it'll remind us like, hey, you forgot this field. We covered the item slot. We got everything in there so that it sets its, its own, you know, it sets its reference, it sets its tooltip, and all of that looks good and or sorry the item reference is created over here in the panel so yeah we did that we got the panel set to where now when you open it it's going to pull the weight and capacity from the inventory it's going to get all that from the player uh, and then it'll call refresh inventory and yeah everything looks good so now it's time to go back into the editor and start building these um building these missing widgets and uh then we can see the inventory working.